Hi, this is Patrick Kulikowski uh, from Video Game Music Online. And joining me here on the first day of E3 is Grant Kirkhope, the one and only. How's it going? The one and only? I certainly hope so. It's going, it's going very <laughs> There's well. clones of you out there. <laughs> Who knows? It's going very well, sir. Very well indeed. So uh, how's your E3 going? Uh, well, it's not gone very far very today. I've just been doing interviews all day for ukulele. So, uh, so it's not been very... Uh, I haven't seen a thing yet, really. I've kind of just spent the entire day talking. Uh, so that's it, really. Did so, you, uh, so ukulele got funded today um, around, what, 3.59, I think? Yeah, 4 In the afternoon, yeah, for about 4 o'clock or yeah. so. Um, how much did it finish with? I think it was 2,090,000 quid pounds at about three million two hundred twenty-two thousand dollars, something like that. It's pretty something impressive. Ridiculous. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, how does that make you feel? <laughs> I don't know, it's just a bit bizarre, really. I, I, I tell you what, in some respects, because I've been like joined, like moaning on about it for for like, years about should we, make, we should make a game like Magic Kazooie all over again, and everyone thought I was talking nonsense. Like I kind of feel that I maybe got something right for once. <laughs> I was maybe right for once. Like um, so, and it's been like you know, all joking aside, like it's been absolutely incredible. The level of response from people that have supported us. People have put you know people have put their hands in their pockets to finance this game. You know, and that is like. There is nothing, there's nothing better than that. It's people that really want this game have gone, I want it so much, I'm prepared to put money up for it. That is like, you know, I can't, I'm, even though I'm not, very, I'm not very often lost for words, but I am lost for words. <laughs> it is amazing. It's amazing. a good feeling, I yeah, bet. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So uh, were you uh, following the press conferences at all that were going on yesterday? A little bit. I watched the Microsoft one. So I was keen to see what Rare were going to do, so I, was kind of, I watched that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was curious what you thought about the Rare replay. Uh, that, uh, I, I think that's I think that's really cool. I think it's a great yeah. idea. I, yeah. I knew about it because I did uh, it, when I went to GDC uh, this year. Uh, I did I recorded some interviews because they got that kind of um, developer interviews that go out. I don't know if you know that, but developer interviews happen throughout the games. Right. So right. as you play them, people pop on and say stuff. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah so ever like sort of recanting old rare stories of old, you know, when we used to do silly things, silly things, silly things. Um, so um, yeah, so I knew about that. So I wanted to see and I wanted to what, know what the new game was. So I was keen to see that too. So yeah. Yeah. no involvement from you with this collection now. No. None whatsoever. <laughs> All the music was done already, so they, <laughs> I guess yeah. they really didn't. Yeah, yeah but, but I must say to that Robin Beanland is doing the music for the um, sea, of Th sea of Thieves game. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Robin's a fantastic composer, so I'm really excited to hear what he does with that. I must say, it's great to actually see a, a new IP from uh, from Rare. It's been such a long time since something like that happened. So. Yeah, no, I know. I've got to say that um, when we did Dream, uh, back in the, back in years ago, right. um, we had like a, we did have a kind of we did have a, we had a game to play a little bit of a game, but the opening cutscene was kind of wandering through the, the kind of forest, and he walked onto a beach, and it's exactly like that in Sea of Thieves. Greg Mails, you one-trick pony, <laughs> you kept that idea for twenty years and used it. Disgraceful, <laughs> disgraceful. <laughs> a little bad blood started over there. I'm sorry, jeez. Um, so uh, I, I was curious about. You're co-composing with David Wise on ukulele. Um, how do you balance familiarity with newness with that game? Because from what I've heard from some of the samples you've released so far, it's very, uh, like, you could compare it to Banjo-Kazooie in that same kind of style with, you know, similar instruments and everything. So uh, are you just trying to harken back to that? Or are, what, what are some, like, new things you might be trying with the music? I think when I wrote the foot, that jungle piece, uh, you know, I guess, Honestly, we all thought the Kickstarter would, would maybe not fund. I know it sounds daft, but we thought it wouldn't... Yeah, get. crazy. I, I would well, never no, imagine. Honestly, we really thought, who knows, people might not want it, you know? And I really thought that it might take a couple of weeks to get to the to, to get to get the, the 170, whatever it was, you know? Um, and uh, so I thought, I wanted to write a tune that kind of compressed all the bunch of Kazooie-isms into one piece of music. So. That's why it sounds like that. I mean, you know, even though it's a new piece of music, it does sound like Banjo Kazooie, right? And that's what that was. That was how it's supposed to be. Right, right. Yeah, so, but I think going forward, I want to try. Like I've did a little thirty-second snippet of that Glacier tune recently. That's on there, and uh, that's that still sounds like Banjo Kazooie, but not not exactly like it. So, I'd like to think that I'm a better composer now than I was then. I may not be, but <laughs> I certainly hope that I am. Um, so I think that um, you know I'll try to put in things I've learned over the last seventeen years. The, as well, along with that, I think you know the, that game is supposed to be. It's not a retro game, like we're looking over our shoulder to the older games, but we're still looking forward to something new. So we want to kind of have the spirit of that thing that we all love, but add new things. So I'll, I'll try to write music that's got the spirit of Banjo Kazooie or the feel of it or the kind of whatever that thing might happen to be, but also have 
new things that I can do, hopefully, that will be equally as interesting, perhaps. You know, so, yeah, I think that it's going to be a mishmash of all that stuff. I want to try and put it all together and, you know, try to have enough reference to the old stuff, but also looking forward to new stuff too, so yeah. Something I personally really loved in the first two Banjo games was how the uh, kind of the feeling of the of the track changed depending on what you were doing, whether you were underwater, swimming, uh, that sort of thing. So is that something you're, you're looking to implement in ukulele? Uh, definitely. I don't, I don't think you can do a game like this without doing that. Yeah. So I think that we're all hoping that we're going to, well not hoping, we're going to do it, right? So it's going to be, um, the Channel Face stuff will be there. Um, I guess we've got, to, we've got to get into the nuts and bolts of it. That's probably a bad phrase. <laughs> nuts and bolts. I see what you did there. Yeah, but, you know, we, we need to get into the kind of, the Cody part of it to kind of make sure it all works and stuff. Like I have done other games on Unity that have worked with it, so I know, that, I know it does work. So it's just, it's all about that technical thing where at some point a programmer at Ukulele, at, at Platonic, will be tasked with dealing with me, moaning at him night and day, why isn't it working, Jens, I'm looking at you. Um, or maybe Chris, I don't know. Um, so yeah, so yeah, we're gonna do that, yeah. That's awesome, a, yeah. cool. Um, so you're, you're employing an orchestra for this soundtrack, right? Is that, uh, how, how much of the, of the orchestra is involved in the soundtrack? Like how many tracks are gonna actually have an orchestra playing most of it, or? Well, you know, I don't know that really because we've only done like I want to go do that one level tune and a bit of a glacier tune. That's all I've done so far. I see, right. But I would imagine that most of it will be done by orchestra. Um, you know, some people are kind of saying would, would like it to sound like the old game, and I, I do say it. You know, it's not a retro game. It isn't supposed to sound like that. So, you know, I always think things like Mario Galaxy sounds fantastic, and you know, that changed because they got a live orchestra in there. You know, it's, you know, I think sometimes people think it's going to sound like something it isn't going to sound like you know it's it's nuts and bolts was live orchestra but it still sounded like banter kazooie music right yeah, you know yeah. you know you know even yeah, though it's like it's the yeah. same melody same yeah. tunes yeah and also like it, it, when i did banter kazooie originally the sample set that i used was clarinets and bassoons and flutes and violins it was just it was just i used orchestral samples they just sounded crap because they, <laughs> <crap, laughs> they were bad because they're bad quality right so it's crap that we got really attached to that yeah, i know so yeah so all i can say is people that might be slightly doubting it is believe me it really is going to sound great there's not there's nothing to worry about honestly what are so uh, I, I imagine you have in the past worked with orchestras so um what are what's that process like what are some of the challenges you have to face um i mean i really like working with orchestra but i think you know because i was classically trained as a kid i spent a lot of years sat in orchestras playing trumpet you know right. so i know what it sounds like so i know i haven't got any, i don't really find any of it difficult really i mean that's probably not I can see, I don't, I don't mean difficulty in, in writing good tunes because that is hard and I try my best. Um, but I'm used to how an orchestra sounds, so I know how it works. Um, you know, so I just think it's a really rewarding experience. That is really fantastic to do. And like, you know, so we're, we're, we're going to hire an orchestrator, probably Nick Rain, because he did all the, all the last stuff for us. And we'll probably go to Prague with James Fitzpatrick in the city of Prague Philharmonic, because we love James and that orchestra. And I've had a great experience with those guys on Amalor, working on King of Amalor. You know, that was a great, the great guys. So I expect we'll do that. but. You know, it's it's a great thing to do. I think it is. You know, we do we call them MIDI mock-ups. So, like, I'll be using it'll it'll sound like the jungle tune. That's all orchestral instruments on the, on the jungle tune, apart from the drums. They're all orchestral things, bassoons and flutes and things like that. So I'll knock it. I'll mock it up like that, and then I'll send an MP3 and a MIDI file to the orchestrating guy. You'll then turn it into parts for the orchestra, and that's how it's going to work. So. Awesome. Cool. Um, when when do you think you're going to get into that process finally? Probably not till next year. Like you know, we'll write music as we go along, and it'll keep changing. But the, the game will, will have you know will have fully fledged music in it from me and Dave, uh, and probably Steve a bit as well. Um, you know, so it'll be all fully functioning and working. It'll just be a case of like swapping out the orchestra, the waves from the orchestra with the webs from the things that we've done on at home. So um, yeah, that's that. Awesome. Uh, what's it like working with David Wise? I'm curious. He's such regard. I mean, you're pretty legendary yourself, but like Dave Wise was, is so regard, highly regarded for his Donkey Kong right. Country soundtracks and everything, and Battletoads. So, uh, what, what's it like wor working working along with him for this game? Right. So, make, so you're saying Dave's better than me? I just get this. Oh, uh, no, not at all. No. That, I hope I hope that's not what you. <laughs> I was implying. No, here. no, not at all. No, I love Dave. Dave's a great guy. Yeah. Me and Dave had a pub rock band at, at, towards the end of our days at Rare. We had super fun doing that. I was. I was singing would you I sang would you believe Dave was doing sax and guitar and everything else was and that it, the Maniacs band that yeah, you were no, with no, oh that's something else that was a metal band me and Dave did a pub rock band like you know <laughs> and we had super fun doing that we used to call him Diamond Dave at that point <laughs> Diamond Dave Wise that was his name 
Um, no, no, it's super fun. I mean, I think that it's pretty unlikely we'll collab collaborate on actual tracks because I think that um, we've kind of got bits of the game that we know that is right for me, bits that are right for him. So we'll probably do different bits ourselves and keep it separate. Not for any reason apart from that's we know that our styles fit certain things that Dave's great at this bit and I'm great at that bit or whatever, you know. So so I, th I think we'll maybe not collaborate. We might, we might do, I don't know, but probably not. But, um, but we'll maybe use the same themes together, different themes, and we'll probably share themes and stuff like that. But, you know, it's going to be super fun working with Dave, so it's going to be like a good laugh and we're, good, we're really looking forward to it, you know. Awesome. And uh, he's still in England, right? So uh, you do like Skype sessions, something like that to get in touch, mostly email or? We haven't done anything like that yet, but I, th I, will, I think we will do. Uh, I just because just it's still early days, right? We're still like right at the start, you know, so we don't, I don't think I even know what other levels are yet, you know, right, and he doesn't, he doesn't know either. Still so, a long way. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, I mean, we'll do all that stuff. So, you know, it'll be, it'll be back to the same old piss taking that's been going on for years, don't worry. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Um, so uh, I wanted to shift over to uh, your presence on Bandcamp because uh, you've been a huge proponent in re-releasing your classic soundtracks on there for, n name that price, right, is right. usually what you do for it. So people can snatch it up for free if they right. wanted to. Um, were there any hurdles in like re-releasing like the Donkey Kong 64 soundtrack or um, I believe you re-released Perfect Dark as well, right? So. How difficult is it to make something like that happen with regards to like licenses and everything like that? Hurdles is a very good word. So, um, all right, so what happened was, I, I, I get a lot of emails right, from people saying, I'd like to have the, the, the Banty Kazoo soundtrack or the, the Donkey Kong soundtrack or whatever. And I kind of got a lot of those over the years. I just kind of got, not sick of it, but I just I thought, I really just should just put it out there. And people can get it. And it's not legal and I can probably get sued to heaven by Microsoft. That's why I put it up for zero money. I thought, if I put it for zero money, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just trying to, you know, put the music up there for the 50 or so people that might want to get it, right? That's what I really, really honestly thought in my heart. That's very true. Um, if you think about it, like, no publisher really goes after anyone for putting out, like, NSF rips of NES tunes and things like yeah. that. So it's similar. So that's what I thought. But, of course, I put the Banzai Kazooie thing out and it got, like, 30,000 downloads it was number one on Bandcamp for a week and I was like oh I'm just gonna get put in jail at this point you know Microsoft are gonna be so mad with me so I did get a little bit of contact from Microsoft sort of suggesting it might be a good idea to take it down and that is the reason I took it down it's not there anymore because I, you know it, Microsoft had to have to be seen to be to be protecting their copyrights that's the law and that's what they did they didn't, they didn't threaten me they said look you know ground you know be, play, play, play ball you've had a good a good run of it now take it down so that's what I did I took, took it down and at least they were kind of nice about it, right? Yeah, no, they were very nice about it, and I, there was no animosity at all, and, right. I, and, I, and I was kind of expecting it at some point. Um, but I just kind of wanted to get... I, I really genuinely thought, you know, I'd get 55 downloads of people. I wanted to... I thought that would be it. It went a little bit ballistic, and it got a bit, a bit out of control. Everyone started writing about it, yeah. Yeah, and it, you know, it got... It was on, it, 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 I put it up there, and this was a grant. It's in Game Informer like that. I thought, oh, Christ, you know, Game Informer writing about it. I'm just going to get jailed. So I left it a little while. But I took it down, you know, for that reason. So, I mean, maybe one day Microsoft might do a release of it. I don't know. I mean, I, I think they should do it at some point. I think people probably would like to buy it probably. Um, but that's why it disappeared. So, you know. I guess it's kind of fruitless to uh, ask about the GoldenEye soundtrack then, right? The thing, about, the thing about the GoldenEye soundtrack is I would never dare do that at all because, like, Eon, the, the people who own Bond, the solar Chidges and Monty Norman, so protective of his theme tune, I probably would be in jail at that point. So me and Graham Norgate have often talked about it, but we could never, ever, ever release it because we would be in jail forever. <laughs> I, I, I suppose fans have already, you know, done those game rips and stuff that you can find online. Yeah, but yeah. if you really want it, it's on YouTube. Just go and get it. Right, that too, yeah. Um, I wanted to wrap up. I, I mentioned Maniacs, uh, uh, that band, but I, I didn't know uh, that recently... Uh, their, the music got released on uh, iTunes or something like that, or has it's been there? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like I, I was a metal band. I played for I played for two metal bands years ago. One called Sire S Y A R and Maniacs. Uh, and we had a, an album out or so of each of those. We did a little bit of touring. I was like, you know, give me a break. I was like twenty or something. So you know, you're allowed to be in, in a hair metal band in the, uh, yeah, when you're that old. I think that's the, it's not against the law, is it? No, not at all. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, it's really cool that people can buy it. I mean, you know, it's. I wrote the song, so... You know, oh, look at that, wow. I was, I was still learning. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that was, that was, you know, it was cool to do it. And, you know, I, I, for the longest time, I wanted to be a, a metal guitar player in a metal band. That was my dream, right? I never, to be a composer never entered my head once, ever. And I mean that, ever. Um, 
until Robin Beanland said to me, look Grant, you've been on unemployment long enough, don't you think you should try and get a real job? He's working at Rare at the time, so come on, try and do what I'm doing, so he, it's his fault. I blame Robin Beanland for being a composer. <laughs> so, you know, so it's his fault. Well, if you ever want to shred on stage again, I, uh, MAGFest is, uh, seems to be the place to go. It's like a video game music mecca. Have you, have you attended before? Or? Yeah, yeah, because like, I mean, when I lived in Baltimore, I lived in Baltimore for four years. Oh, really? And okay. I was at Big Huge Games, and uh, Dom, Dominic Sacchetti, who's one of the guys that runs it, uh, I, I, I spoke. Yeah. I did a couple of panels there for like for two, three years in a row. And then I moved to LA, so I, I haven't been for a while. Right. But uh, me and uh, Danny Baranowski and uh, and Jules from uh, YouTube <laughs> keep talking about um, some kind of uh, metal <laughs> meat boy meets Banjo Kazooie meets Donkey Kong, something or other thing. Uh, we keep talking about that. And Dave Wise too, actually. Uh, whether we get around to it, I don't know. But I, I think I've got this thing about coming on to the Donkey Kong rap. <laughs> 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 I think it would be great to kind of play and kind of you know march on to the DK and get everyone singing it, you know. That's my dream in my, uh, in my you know, my metal rock star mind. Um, but um, perhaps it won't happen that way, you might get booed off stage. But um, <laughs> yeah, kind of, that's my kind of dream. One day, one day. Uh, I hope that happens, because that, that sounds marvelous, yeah. How about a GK rap instead, well, Grant Kirkhope? I'm supposed to be doing the GK rap for UK lately, because yet again, they said, one of the Kickstarter goals was, you know, if you raise this much cash, Grant will do another DK rap. And I was like, for Christ's sake, they never asked me about it. They just put it on the Kickstarter and I've got, I've got to do it now. So... What do you think that would... What would the chorus be like for that? Oh, Christ knows. I have, I have an idea of it. I'm going to make an ass of myself, oh, but... No, tell me what it is. Tell me. Is GK. It? Grant Kirk Hope. <laughs> GK. Grant Kirk Hope is here. Well, I, I have to say that my rapping is so bad that that's probably way better than I could possibly, probably manage anyway. <laughs> So like, you uh, want me on for that? Yeah, I think you'd have to be, you'd have to come along and do it for me. <laughs> That'd I, be pretty I'm, swell. I'm just thinking like, what am I going to do for that? I haven't got a clue. So I've actually said to Danny Vanoski because Danny's a great friend and he's way more better at things like that than I am. So I might get a little bit of help from him to kind of point me in the direction of like credible rap music. So I'm pretty shit at it. But the plan is to try and get all the D, all the uh, Platonic guys to uh, contribute to the rap. And Chris Sutherland was the original rapper on the VK rap, wow. so he get him to do that again. Uh, and hopefully the, the less involvement that I have with it, the, the better. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I, shall, I shall do my best, but I'm not promising it. Hopefully it'll be as bad as the last one, put it that way. And finally to end, uh, any ukulele action going on outside E3? I know uh, Platonic was kind of goading you into doing that. Yeah, again, that was something they, they did without asking me. But it's said, like, wouldn't it be a great idea to get Grant to play the ukulele? I was like, oh, for God's sake. So <laughs> I do have the ukulele in the car, actually, oh, in, yeah. in the car park, but it's probably got all warped because of the heat right now. So I, I may, I, I don't know, I may be talked into it. I, I don't know, I'm still thinking about it. I'm hoping to kind of get out of it, really. Fingers crossed that we'll see some YouTube videos of that uh, in the coming days, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, final messages to the fans? Honestly, uh, from the bottom of my heart, like, and I really mean it, like, you know, um, I know I joke around a little bit, but it's so special that these people have put their hands in their pockets for this game. It, it is, uh, you know, but if I talk about it long enough, I can probably cry about it. Um, it, it upsets me that much in a good way. So seriously, it's like really, 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 really mega. And we're going to do our absolute best to make a game you've been waiting for for the last 17 years. And we really are going to work our balls off. We really are. It's going to be a labor of love and I, we'll do our best. That's all I, we could do, we'll do our best for you, that's all I can say. Awesome to hear. Uh, Grant, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for, so much for taking the time. And thank you so much for the music over the years. It's uh, a real pleasure. Thank you for the music, the songs. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, thank you, thank you for wanting to talk to me. I know it's, I'm, not a, I'm a hard person to talk to. <laughs> no, no, no. Thanks again. Thanks. <laughs>